Hi, my name is Jeff Fortenberry. I'm the representative of the 1st Congressional District in Nebraska. And today we are on the eve of a very important vote in the House of Representatives that will actually try to stop the overspending and stop the government from defaulting on our debt obligations. But before I uh, go to vote, I wanted to give you an overview of our fiscal situation in this country. It is very bewildering when we start talking about budgets, debt, and deficits. So let me walk through a few charts with you. This is the president's budget that he submitted to us for this year. It's a bit mythical in that this was never enacted, but it gives us a good framework to discuss where your money goes and where your money comes from. The president submitted a budget for this year of $3.8 trillion to the House of Representatives. Basically, it's divided up into these categories. Defense is 22% of the spending. This is the blue area of the pie here. In Washington, we call that discretionary spending. Non-defense discretionary spending is about 14% of the budget. That's roads and parks and educational programs and basically a number of the policies that the government uh, promotes and engages in. Social Security spending is about 19% of the budget, this maroon area here. Medicare, 13%. Medicaid, 8%. Other income support programs, such as uh, supplemental security income for the disabled and unemployment, and some of the uh, bailout programs are included in this other category. That's about 17% of the budget. That's dramatically increased from 2008, where it was only about 11% of the budget. Next, we have interest on the debt in this yellow area here, and that's 7% of the overall budget. Remember this number, $3.8 trillion. That's how much your government is basically spending this year. Where does your money come from? Where do governmental revenues come from? Well, revenues projected for this year, again, starting last year, were to be about $2.6 trillion. Of that, the individual income tax, this blue area, accounts for about 44% of the revenue to the government. Payroll taxes, about 36%, this orange area here. Income taxes, corporate income taxes, this yellowish area here is about 12%. Then excise and estate and gift taxes are the, are the remaining balance. Revenue estimate of $2.6 trillion, expenditures of $3.8 trillion. What does that mean? A very, very big budget deficit. You can see the gap here. We had spending projected to be 3.8 trillion on these programs. Revenue is about 2.6 trillion, and that created a, a projection of a 1.267 trillion dollar deficit. In reality, though, because the economy has gotten worse this year, the de budget deficit has ballooned to 1.6 trillion dollars as revenues to the federal government have fallen. Let's take a historical look as to how we got here. When you have deficit spending year after year, that increases debt. In 1990, you had a government that basically spent $1.25 trillion. In the year 2000, it spent $1.8 trillion. This year, we're spending about $3.8 trillion. The size of government has basically doubled in the last 10 years. Spending has exponentially increased as well in the last three years. Now, that creates deficits when you have less revenue than uh, outlays. In 1990, of $200 billion, we had actually a surplus in the year 2000 of about $236 billion, but this year we have a deficit of $1.6 trillion. Again, off the charts because the revenues do not match the spending. Now, revenues have also grown in the last 10 years, but spending has far outstripped it. And by the way, the blame for this spans the political spectrum. The debt in 1990 was $3 trillion, in the year 2000, $6 trillion, it is now at $14 trillion. This is a very, very important to, number to remember because that's basically the size of the economy and it's also a, a cap that we have set by law that does not allow the government to go past this $14 trillion mark. So what we are debating right now in Congress is a way in which we can prevent the government from defaulting on its obligations, not having enough money basically through borrowing to pay for its obligation, but trying to stop the overspending so that we do not end up in this type of mess, this type of crisis again. That's why this number is important because it's leveraging an, a, a moment of clarity for the United States and the entire Congress. We have to get the fiscal house in order. The debt ceiling debate has captured all of the, is a convergence of all of the debate that's been going on about the overspending and the poor economy that has created a falling set of revenues. So it's been important to me to try to use this moment, a vote on increasing the debt ceiling, to ensure that we are trying to stop the overspending, 
so that we do not get into this type of crisis mode again. The total debt per person in the United States is about, was in 1990 about $13,000, in the year 2000 about twenty, and the year this year it's about $45,000. Now I have five children, that means that all of my children and my wife and I each owe $45,000 to the government if we were to pay off this debt. That's simply not manageable for most families in America. So what we have to do is begin to tighten the belt, engage in some shared sacrifice here, get the fiscal house in order by trying to stop overspending, getting the trajectory in the right direction, which I think will actually help the economy rebound, get people back to work. When people are working, they pay taxes to the government and it will help resolve the situation. I also believe that we need significant tax reform, so hopefully once we get past this moment where we stop part of the overspending and prevent a default on our debt, we can begin to undergo the serious work of reforming the tax code so that it is simpler, fairer, actually is more beneficial to the economy, gets people back to work, and that will help bring in more revenues to the Treasury. This is all, I understand, a very bit bewildering, but if we do not act now, this is what we're looking at. Currently, our debt is about right here, and this is the historical trend. Clearly, national debt becomes a huge percentage, a growing percentage of the overall economy. It's unsustainable. Currently, our national debt is basically equal to the output of the entire economy. That's the situation that Greece finds itself in. Now, the United States is not Greece. We have a very large, resilient economy, and we are a currency of reserve for the rest of the world. So we can get ourselves out of this. It took a long time to get into this because of the dramatic overspending. It's going to take a while to get out of it. But we can, through some shared sacrifice and constructive solutions, stop the overspending, get the fiscal house in order, and I think that will be in the best interest of the American people and particularly the economy. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to this. We'll continue to work hard to find the right solutions for the well-being of America.